greatest bumper videos we've ever shown. My big fat mouth. I want to tell you a story. But before I do that, I have to tell you that we are in part two of this series that we thought was going to be only a part one. So then we made it a part two because like Jake said, we all need to hear a little bit more of what the word of God has to say about our big fat mouths. That's right. Before we go into that, I want to give you guys a little bit of an update. You may notice that there's a little bit of progress happening every week as you come uh, as you come to this campus. You pull in, you see a little bit more work has been done with our expansion project. If you are at all new, like maybe in the last four weeks, five weeks, we are expanding our space so more families can have a place yeah. to experience Woo. real life change. Right. We're making more room for more families to make heaven their home, and right. so. Uh, Every week, there's a little bit more progress as you come through. We want to thank you guys for uh, your patience through this time of progress. Progress can be messy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So thank you for working with us with the parking strategy that we, seems like we're trying to update and make better and better every single week. But this last week, uh, we did a little digging. We dug for the footings, and we poured the, the base for, the, uh, for the, where the columns are going to go. And this week, it looks like we're probably going to pour some concrete for the footings themselves. And so before you know it, there's going to be a foundation. There's going to be a pad. That's and right. then there's going to be some steel that's going to be erected and a skin and some insulation and then floors going in and the sheetrock and we're walls gonna coming out walls coming out <laughs> we're gonna have new bathrooms it's right. gonna be amazing if you haven't seen the renderings of what the expansion project is going to look like go to our website and you can click on the this is our time campaign and you can watch the video and you can get all the information if you've not yet taken advantage of this opportunity to get involved financially or maybe with your time or with some resources that God's given you let me tell you something everything that you have Everything you have was given to you by God. It's true. Okay? He is going to take care of your food. He's going to take care of your clothing. He's right. going to take care of your transportation. He is going to take care of every need you have. When you put him first, he's going to take care of you. But then there's right. going to be some left over. And guess what? He wants to use that so that we can make his name great and we can help people make heaven their home. There's no greater calling. There's nothing better that we can do with the, with the money that God's given us than help make a way to pave a way for people to make heaven their home. That is something you can be a part of that's going to last an eternity. That's right. We're talking about making an impact that is going to impact people's lives forever. Yeah. All right? There's a lot of great things we can do here on earth. We can build memorials in our names. We can do these great things. But nothing compares to helping people know who Jesus is. And so I want to That's encourage right. you, yeah. if you've not made a commitment to be a part of this campaign yet, I want to encourage you. Go to the website. Uh, you can find information there. Also, at the connecting point, the ladies can answer any questions you have. And if they don't know the answer, they're going to figure it out and they're going to find the answer for you. So <laughs> I want to I encourage you to be a part, begin contributing today, and just watch what God does as he brings more families from every direction to make heaven their home. Okay, so I want to start with a story. All right, I didn't do this last service, and I thought, I'm going to um, throw in a story. So my dad was at the gym one day, and this was a long time ago. This is when I was probably a teenager, and he came home, and he told me the story. I wasn't there, but he told me this story of how he went over to the, uh, the sit-up bench. There's two of them, side by side, and he sees that this lady is doing sit-ups on the sit-up bench. And he goes and sits next to her and he, you know, he cranks out his set or two and then he sits up. And my dad's a very friendly, friendly guy. He always likes to, you know, start conversations. He's very nice. And he turned to this lady and he noticed that she was very full uh, around her mid-region. And he was um, wondering, you know, how far along she was. So he asked her, he said, when are you due? Now, men, let me help you. Back up in the story here. She was doing sit-ups, correct? She was doing sit-ups. Okay, first clue. At the gym. <laughs> right. 
So <laughs> she sat up very abruptly uh, and with a very sharp response said, what did you say to me? And his response was this, I said, nice do. I think they just paged me. True story. True story. I said, nice do. Okay. I think they just paged me. I got to go. He got up and walked off. Realizing that she was not expecting at all. She was not pregnant. She wasn't going to have a baby. Listen, man, you do not ask a woman ever. I don't care never, how pleasantly never. plump she is. Don't you do it. not ask her when she is due. <laughs> Comment about her hair about what she's wearing, that's fine. Any, any compliment you want, but do not ask her when she is due. Has there ever been a time you're in the middle of a conversation and before you know it, there's no turning back, there's nothing you can do about it at this time, but your foot is now pl- uh, firmly planted in your mouth. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever been in a conversation, you realize, yeah. okay, the words that just came out of this orifice, they should not have come out. I should not have said what I said, and there is no taking it back. There's no rewind. There's no reversing it. I can't make it go away. I said something I should not have said. Many times, I know each and every one of us in this room, we can look back and we can think, if I just would have kept my big mouth shut. Yep. I, you know, some of you in this room, you might even be thinking of relationships that have been broken for years and have never been mended because of something you said or something they said that was so hurtful and there's never been any, any mending after that. Mm. I'm telling you, words are powerful. Yeah. Words cut deep to our soul. They, they can hurt. They can tear down or they can build up. But I'll, I have a question for you. We're going to do a little bit of a survey, okay, this morning. Are you the type of person that when you talk, you focus more on really, really building people up? Or do you sometimes tear people down? Are you really good at listening? I mean, really sincerely listening to what people have to say? Or are you more about making sure that people hear what you're trying to say. Do you do, are you better at listening or are you better at, at, at talking and are you trying to win the conversation? Are you trying to be the last one that has the word in that conversation? Are you trying to win the title of the last word? Are you that person? Or, or do you really, really slow down and just think about what people have to say? You know what that takes? It takes patience. Yeah. It takes patience. And that's really when you boil all of today's message down, it's really about being a person of patience, which is really, really, really hard. And I know a lot of pastors, they think they're being funny and they're like, don't ever pray for patience because then God's going to like wreck your world and he's going to make you learn what that, no, pray for patience. We all need it and we need to be wrecked. We need our world to be wrecked. We need to learn what it means to just slow down and to think and not react or overreact When so many times this is exactly what we do, we don't think about what we're saying. And before you know it, we've said something that we never should have said. And those words have hurt somebody that really means a lot to us. And we can't reverse it. We can't do anything about it. Proverbs 16 and 32 says this, it's better to be patient than to be powerful. Mm. Let that sink in. It's better to be patient than it is to be powerful. Another version says this. It's better to be slow to speak than to be a mighty warrior that's conquered a bunch of land, okay? Mm-hmm. It's better to be slow to speak and to be patient. Think about what you're going to say. Just slow down than to possess all this land, to be a conqueror of, of many, many cities. It's better to just be a person that slows down and thinks about what they say. It's better to have self-control. Everybody say self-control. Self-control. I know, that was hard to say that, wasn't it? (laughs) Than to conquer an entire city. It's better to have self-control than to conquer an entire city. I want to tell you something about relationships, okay? I want you to think about any relationship that you have, any relationship you've ever had, any relationship you ever want to have, try having that relationship without trust. And it's going to be really, really difficult because trust is the number one attributing factor to a great relationship. We all want trust. That's why my relationship with Christ is so, so vitally important because there's nobody on this earth that's ever proven to me beyond the shadow of a doubt that I can trust him. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He'll never turn his back on me. He adopted me when I was not worthy of being adopted. 
He chose me. He made me a joint heir with right. Jesus Christ. He's given me an inheritance when I have done him so wrong. You see, I don't deserve the relationship that I have with Jesus. Yeah. But he gave me that relationship, not because of who I am, but because of who he is. Not because of anything that I've ever done or anything I ever will do, but because of what he did right. on the cross. He Amen. died for my sins. Amen. I can trust that Jesus is always going to love me. I can trust him. And in any relationship that we have, we have to know that we know that we know that we can trust that person. But guess what? People are going to let us down. But don't you be a person that lets someone else down. You be a person that they can trust. That's right. You know what that takes? Proving to people that you're trustworthy by not talking so much, but slowing down, thinking about what you're saying and being a better listener and not being so, so set on being heard and always having to win and in some cases even losing your temper because you want to be right. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful for your word. And Lord, yes, we pray right now that you would help each and every one of us to be patient no matter what that looks like. We ask you to bring whatever may come to teach us to slow down, to teach us to, to think about what others have to say, to really care about what others have to say and to think less of ourselves. Help us to get out of the way so that you can be seen in our lives. Help us to be a person that others can trust. Help us to be patient. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Well, if you have your word this morning, go to the book of James. James is in the New Testament, and James is a little tiny book that only has five chapters in it, but it is an incredible book, and I'm going to tell you why. James was authored by none other than James. <laughs> Some of them are pretty easy, all right? So when I was in New Testament survey and that question was on my test, I was like, score, I got this one right. It was written by James. Now, there are a few different James in the Bible, but this specific James was the brother or half-brother of Jesus. Now, I find this very interesting myself because during the time that Jesus was traveling around doing ministry, and I want you to think if you know anything about the Bible, you know anything about what Jesus did, he spent three years doing miracle after miracle after miracle, all right? So just think of some. He fed 5,000, right? He raised Lazarus from the dead. He healed people everywhere he went. James watched all of this happen, and James was not a believer, See, what was really interesting is during the time Jesus actually was doing ministry, James was not a follower. He did not believe that his brother was the Messiah. Sometimes the people closest to us can't even see what God is really doing in our life. They're just completely blinded to it. And that was James. But there came a point when James was converted, when James realized that, oh my goodness, my brother is really the Messiah. My brother is the promised one. My brother is going to be the one who allows me to have a relationship with the creator of the world because he sacrificed himself. Do you know the moment when James made that decision? The exact moment is not notated, but what we do know is that it was after the resurrection. After Jesus died and he watched his brother die a brutal death and after he was buried and three days later he rose again and he saw that James became a follower of his own brother and at that point there was no turning back there's nothing you could have done or said that would have deterred him from following after Jesus now I tell you this because this book is one that is so practical all right so when James wrote it I think that like he was thinking to himself there's so many people just like me it's like there was a form of religion. I was following him, and I was seeing everything that he was doing, but I was denying the power of God at work in my own life because I wouldn't just admit that Jesus was who he said he was. So what he wrote was all very, very practical. So there's five chapters, and there's two purposes behind everything he wrote. The first one was this, helping people practically understand how to have a real relationship with God. This, get this right first. Mm -hmm. If you try to fix anything else in your life without getting this right, That's right. it will never work out. That's and right. James knew that because he obviously had tried. So he focuses on getting this right. And then he focuses on your relationships here on earth and helping you to have better relationships. And that's what we're going to talk about today as we talk about what's filling your mouth. 
So today, the question as we launch into James, we're going to go to verse 19. The question is this, what's filling your mouth? Is your mouth full of words that are helpful or words that are hurtful? I want you to think about that as we go into today's text. James 1, verses 19 through 20, and it says this. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be, here we go, quick to listen and slow to speak. I want you to just take a moment and just say that. Let it sink in. Say, quick to listen. Quick to listen. Come on, you can talk in church. Quick to listen. Quick to listen. Help me out. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Now, we could just shut the word of God today and walk out of these doors. And if you would just do exactly what that says, it will change this relationship as you are quick to listen as God is speaking and quick to take in the word of God if you read it and slow to speak. And then your relationships this way, if you would just be quick to listen when somebody else is talking and slow to speak, would that not change our life? But because I don't think you're actually going to do it just yet, we're going to finish out today's message, okay? (laughs) All right. Pick it up. At the end of that, it says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness or the right positioning with God that he desires. Now, what's interesting about this is it seems like kind of like um, contradicting itself. Be quick on one hand to listen and be slow to speak. How can we exactly do that? I mean, was James saying like I should speed up my hearing ability? Like I should listen faster? No, that's not at all what he was saying. What he was saying was this. The first priority in any relationship, your relationship with God and your relationship with others, the very first thing you have to learn how to do if you're going to go any farther in that relationship is listening. And what's crazy about that is that most of the time, for most of us, the priority is not listening. The priority is talking. Because we like to hear ourselves talk. I mean, some of you, you talk to yourselves. Don't even deny it. Like, I know you do, right? I hear you talking to yourself. But here's the thing. It's possible because Jesus himself said this, that we should humble ourselves. And when you humble yourself, what you're doing is you're caring more about somebody else than you do about yourself. How many of you would just be honest and you find it difficult sometimes to listen? Wow. I don't think this message was for today then. I honestly, I'll be honest, not even in a bad way, okay? Brad is a dreamer. You've got to know that's why we exist here, okay? Because God gave him this ability to dream, these huge dreams, and he gave me the ability to just get behind it and make it happen, all right? Me and Jesus. That's why he always said, like, I'll dream it up and you go do it. Well, sometimes when he's She's telling me, kidding. like, these really new ideas, that. this weekend, this weekend he was like, Misty, I got this new thing I want to tell you about. And I, we were headed Black Friday shopping, okay? That's just one of the things we do. My kids all at that point put their earbuds in. You know what I'm saying? They're like, here we go. And so I'm like, okay. And I'm honestly what I was trying to do, okay? You didn't say that. I didn't say what? What you were trying to I do. I know, because I was trying to be the good wife. So okay? I thought, it's quiet. This is an opportunity for me to share my ideas. What I was really doing is I was on my phone, and I was making my Christmas list, okay? Because if you're going to go shopping, Proverbs 31 women, you need to know why you're going. You need to have a plan. So I was making a list. If you fail to plan, you plan That's to right. fail. I'm making a list of all the people in our family and all the people I need to buy for, and I'm, I'm trying to formulate this when he says, there's something I, I've been thinking about I want to tell you, and I was like, Okay. Such, such a good idea. I literally had to think to myself, okay, I can crush his dreams right now and tell him, like, I need to get my shopping list together, or I can just listen. Now, so I said, okay. And he was like, it won't take long. I'm like, you're a liar. Okay, <laughs> go, go. You know what I'm saying? And so he starts telling me this idea, okay? Of course, it has to do with ministry, and it's awesome, and it's this newfound idea, and it's going to take us big places, and I'm listening, and I'm listening, and I'm listening. And we're in Rogers. And we're in Rogers. <laughs> and we had been in oh, like I'm sorry about Tiff that. when he started, okay? <laughs> but here's what's important to understand. It's not always easy. What he had to say was great, all right? It's Thank not you. always an argument. It's not always like that. Even learning how to listen is caring about somebody else and what they care about. Right. And so I had to make myself turn off my own brain and actually listen and actually just take in 
what he was saying. And, and honestly, when you have a relationship with someone, that so often is what's missing because in our own minds, we have so little patience and we want what we want. So I really wanted to be working on my Christmas shopping list, but I had to make a decision that, you know what, that can wait. This is really important to him, so it should be important to me as well. And when you study this passage out and it says, be quick to listen, make that your first priority. He goes on to say, and then be slow to speak. And he doesn't mean like slow down your words. What he means is this, slow, literally in the original language, meant to delay or to wait. And so what it means is that you pause, that you think before you speak, that you try to formulate your thoughts before they come out your mouth. If my father-in-law would have thought about the fact that the girl was doing sit-ups, he would have realized she's not going to have a baby because she's doing sit-ups. But he didn't think. He just, this thought popped in his head, oh, when are you due? And totally offends the woman, right? I could tell you a funny story that Brad did last week, but I won't since he didn't share it. You ask him about it later, okay? When you forget somebody's name and you just pop off with something, just Uh. ask him. Just ask him. Okay. (laughs) I don't want to share him, but I'm not going to. You can't. I better move on. Just ask Pastor Brad what he called someone and what happened when he forgot their name. You should always just say, hey, how are you? Uh. Forget their name. You don't need to remember their name. Don't say anything other than that. All right? When you look at the next part of this, it says to speak. Speak literally is talking about selection. When okay, you study, so I'll tell you. Oh, uh, you're going to tell them? All right, so, well, you can't leave a whole crowd hanging. <laughs> you just know everybody's going to ask They're you. They're going to be wondering all day, what the heck did Pastor say to that lady? Okay, so. Shh, this is so funny. I was doing some shopping, and do you ever, maybe it's just me, but do you ever, you're in public, and you see somebody, and you know who they are. But You've known them for years. Blank out. You totally blank out on what their name is. Raise your hand. Please help me out here. Thank you. It's not just me. I totally forgot this lady's name, and she's a very important person. <laughs> and so me being the positive, encouraging guy, you know, I'm always trying to lift people up. She's, she's an older lady, okay, older, much older than I, okay? I blanked out on her name, okay? And I, I want to use people's names because I want them to know that they're important to me. So I said, hey, how are you? Beautiful. <laughs> thought it was innocent. I was innocent. <laughs> well, here's the problem. I had a hat on. He looked like a scumbag. Let's just be honest. You were working in the I yard. Was, it was a work day. Hat was back. Had a half-grown beard. My yeah. hat was on backwards. Did not look like Pastor Brad at all. kind of scummy. All. Okay, she did not recognize me. I've known this lady for years. <laughs> she didn't recognize me. And she looked up at me and she said, excuse me. <laughs> my guys, my heart went into my stomach immediately. I got sick. And I said, well, can I call you beautiful? And she said, no, you really probably shouldn't. And I said, Pastor Brad, Mountain Movers Church. She said, oh, how are you? And she gave me a hug. I, I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I said, I'm feeling really bad right now. It would have been better to say I forgot your name than to offend her like that. She thought you were coming on to her. Yeah. Yeah. It was not a good deal. Bad deal. Bad deal. I still, I feel sick right now. I felt so I felt so bad. He's brought it up like every day, and he's like, I, have, I cannot believe like, that I, I did can, that. I blanked out. Well, I got to call her something. Hey, you <laughs> forgot her name. So, so there are times that, that you should slow down and think before you speak. You know, Act like you're on the phone. Oh, Just there you go. boom. Hey, got to call. Hey. All right. So I want you to think about this. How many relationships in your life could have been saved, failed relationships could have been mended had someone just been willing to be quick to listen and slow to speak. This morning I want to show you a little clip, and you guys have probably seen this because it was, went viral and it was huge, but here's what's interesting, and this is very funny, but I want you to think about how honestly it really is the truth in most of our I think relationships. It simplifies a lot of relationships. Check this out. They can listen to me, listen to me. Like, like I do this all the time. And if I go out at the, at the house with the door, Matthew has his toys. And then Matthew has all his toys. Okay, 
But I have to yell at you guys. Listen. Okay, what? Like everything they do at this house, they can't trust everything at Grandma's house. Okay. Okay, then what? Then you're not listening to me. Then you're not listening to me. I asked you not to do something. Linda, but listen to me. Look at if you do something, if you get that out that bird thing off, you're gonna break it. Okay. But I'm asking, I'm letting you know but that you Linda, cannot no, Linda, no I'm Linda, li lick it, lick it. You're not listening to me. Linda, listen to me now. Lick it, lick listen it, to me listen now. To, listen to no, me. you're not listening. I said no cupcakes. And you try to get cupcakes and you try to ask grandma. Linda, Didn't you? Linda, lick it, lick it, lick it. If we do something right out this, if we, if we get close it, you can't even get them. You're going to burn your butt. What's going to burn your butt? No. You and Kevin don't listen. So I have to give both of you guys pop pals in your butt. But Linda, but Grandpa, but Grandpa's uh, going to give me pop pals in the butt. No, he's not. Yeah. I have to, you want, you don't want me to hit Kevin or you don't want me to spank you? No. Why? Then I have to spank Kevin. He's your little pop ups, but he doesn't listen. But Linda, honey, honey, look at, look at this. Right now, they can't do anything if we can't get everything out of the wall. If we're gonna break everything down. I'm not breaking anything down. I'm just letting you know Linda, you cannot it, have it, cupcakes it, for dinner. It, Linda, Linda. Like this thing, I never belong to you. Anything, you can't get anything and anything and anything. I'm done arguing with you. I'm done arguing with you. You need to listen to the things that I say because I'm the mom and I'm the no, adult. No, look at, listen to me. All the time to get them the, the, this thing, this, this, this thing, but they can't. You can't I'm you can done break. arguing with you. Linda, I'm done oh, arguing with you. Wow. Oh. How often, honestly, think about it in your own life, do you have those kind of conversations where both of you so bad want to communicate what you have to say that neither one of you are listening and you're just going back and forth and back and forth. Listen, listen, listen. You're not listening to me until it explodes with, I'm done. And somebody walks out of that room with no resolve. Now, that is funny. But at the same time as any mom, you're like, oh, like, what would you do in that moment? You know what I'm saying? You want to choke your little kid because they're like mocking you, right? And we can laugh, but not until it's your kid, right? But you know, guys, Proverbs 29, 20 says this. There is more hope for fools than for someone who speaks without thinking. James was trying to help us to understand in this passage that it's not so much about you being right and being heard and coming to your own defense when you're in conversation, but it's about doing what's right. And the fact is, Jesus taught the golden rule, and you know it, you've taught it to your kids, and that is treat people the way you would want to be treated. So even if you're the one on the receiving end trying to listen, think about the fact that if you had something you wanted someone else to hear, have enough respect to pause and listen. And especially if you're in a heated relationship and you're in a heated moment, let me just help you out. Let's go a step further. When somebody is trying to communicate, and honestly, you're listening, you're listening, the best thing you could do is then to ask a question. Because for you to really be able to respond, you need to fully understand what it is they're trying to tell you. Parents with your kids, spouses with one another, coworkers and employers, you need to listen before you speak. Ask a question, say, okay, and then say, so let me get this straight. This is what you're trying to tell me. This is how you feel. This is why you hit your sister in the face. You know what I'm saying? Then, and only then, have a response. James knew that it's difficult, but it is possible to be quick to listen and to be slow to speak. That's really hard. It is hard. It says be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Why is it we get angry so many times when we get in these heated discussions and these arguments? I think the fact is, is that we get defensive because we feel like we can't trust the other person in this conversation because they're not listening to what it is we want to say. They're not seeing things from our perspective. 
Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about the fact that when somebody's telling you something, and maybe it stings a little bit, maybe, maybe what they're saying to you, you're not receiving it well because it hurts a little. Let me, let me share this perspective with you. Do you think that there might be some truth to what they're saying? Or maybe, maybe what they're trying to tell you, maybe they're seeing things from a different perspective and maybe, maybe their perspective is off. Maybe they don't have a clear understanding of what's really, really happening. But if we were just to step back and to spend more time just quietly, sincerely listening to the other person that we're talking to, think about how much we can accomplish. If we'll just slow down and just think about what it is they're trying to say. You know what that takes? It takes Mm self-control. That is so hard. Self-control is one of the fruits of the Spirit, all right? It's it's talked about in the Word of God, and it goes like this. When, When we walk in the Spirit... The Bible says that we won't walk out the things of the flesh. We won't, we won't exercise the things that fulfill us and make us happy. We're going to do what makes God happy. How do we do that? We have to get into the Word of God because the Word of God is God's Word to us. Right. It's His message to you and I teaching us how He wants us to think, how He wants us to live, how He wants us to act, how He wants us to walk, and how He wants us to talk. So when we get into the word of God, when we get into God's presence, when we walk in the spirit, then the Bible says we're going to walk in the fruit of the spirit and not by the things of the flesh. So what is the fruit of the spirit? It's love, joy, peace. Who needs some peace? Yeah. Yeah? Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we want to... See God move mightily in any of our relationships. We have to have self-control. We have to think about others before we think about ourselves. When we walk in the Spirit, we become more like Jesus. And when you think about who Jesus is, Jesus cares more about everybody else than he cares about himself. How do we know this? We saw him exercise this thought on the cross. He gave himself fully for you and I. He cared more about us than he cared about his own flesh. He was willing to take that walk to the cross and die because he first loved us. He first loved you and he first loved me. The greatest commandment is this. We can sum up this entire word of God in this one commandment. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, and do this. Are you ready? Love your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? That's not the person that just lives next door. That's everybody on this planet. Love your neighbor. Love all people as much as you love yourself. You want to know why I think God put that part in there? Because he knows you and I love ourselves a whole lot. (laughs) And that's why we get in these heated discussions. And that's why we end up saying things that we should have never said. Because we love ourselves so much. We want to hear what we have to say. And we want everybody else to hear what we have to say. When at the end of the day, that's not who Jesus is. Jesus says, slow down. Listen to what somebody else is trying to say and care more about them than you care about yourself. You know what this is going to help us do? It's going to help us to not get so angry and so upset, but it's going to help us to have self-control in these relationships. Guys, we need this so, so very bad. There's one word that can pull it all together, honor. It's not a word we use a lot in today's culture, is it? We don't use that word a whole lot, but my family, my children hear that all the time because it's, it's the scriptural mantra of our home. It's what we talk about all the time, all right? And it's, and it's found in 1 Peter 2 and 17. It says this, are you ready? Honor all people. Now, I know the word all can be confusing sometimes because we tend to think, well, what does that really mean exactly? It means all (laughs) people, every person, honor them. Well, what's honor? Honor is when we build people up. We build them up. We don't tear them down. That's okay. not who Jesus is. Jesus is not about tearing people down. He's about building people up. Honor all people people what does that look like slow down listen linda to what somebody else has to say that's right stop trying to be heard 
slow down and think about what your response is going to be and think, okay, is, is what I'm about to say, is this going to hurt them or is this going to help them? Is this going to build them up or is this going to tear them down? Because I, I don't want to disappoint my heavenly father. I don't want to say something that Jesus wouldn't say. I especially don't want to go to bed realizing, you know, tonight that I've said something that could possibly hurt somebody and it might stick with them. My grandfather told this really funny joke. He said, you know, script in regards to marriage, he said, scripture says, don't go to bed angry. He said, so stay up and fight. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. That's bad advice. But, you know, it's, it's so true. We, we, we get in these, in these arguments and these, 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 you know, battling out our perspectives, and we just want to fight it out because we want to win that title of being right or getting the last word. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. Be the kind of person that proves to people the, the existence of God in your life. You want to know how you do that? Slow down. Be patient. Have okay. self-control. Don't jab at people. Don't try to hurt them with your words. Slow down and think about what would Jesus say in this situation? Sometimes it's better not to say anything at all, Mama said. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything good to say, then just don't say anything at all. But be prayerful and think about what God is wanting to do through your mouth and through your life and you'll build people up. And I think those relationships will never be the same again. All right? Um, I want to pray today. And I, I, want, I want to ask God to help us in this because I know that this is something that we all struggle with every single day because we all have mouths. And whenever we talk, we're either going to hurt people or we're going to help people. We're going to either right. encourage them or discourage them. Just whatever you do, don't call somebody beautiful if you don't know their name, all right? <laughs> Let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I, I know you, you have given us this, this, what could be called a weapon, the mouth. But it's, it's also this beautiful tool that you've given us that can bring such beauty and such love and compassion to relationships, encouragement, God. There's so many wonderful things we can do with our mouth. And there's so many horrible, destructive things we can do with it. Your word says that the tongue is like a, a rudder on a mighty ship. There's this huge ship and it's... it's, it's there's waves and wind crashing against it, but, but yet there's this teeny little rudder that can determine the direction of that ship. And so is our mouth, God. We can cause such pain, but we can also bring guidance and encouragement to people's lives. God, I pray over every one of us in this room today, Father God, that you would use us, that you would use our words to honor all people. Help us to be patient. Help us to be slow to speak, quick to listen, and and really slow, God, to get angry and say things that we regret. Help us today, Lord, in this. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to ask you today, do you have have a relationship with Christ? Do you have a real relationship with Him? Do you know Him? Do you know that heaven is your home? I want to tell you, friend, today, there's never been anything more real in my life than this. God doesn't just exist. He didn't just create everything that we see. When we look outside, when we look up, and when we look down, He didn't just create everything, but He has given us an eternal hope in Him. And He extends that invitation to you and I. He promises us so many things, but what He doesn't promise us is one more minute on planet Earth Lord forbid, but this could be the last day that we live. Make this day count. Make this the day that you said yes to a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. Make heaven your home. If you want to do that, it's about admitting to God like I did years ago that, that I'm a sinner. There's things that I've done, things I've said that have displeased him in so many ways. But you can ask God to forgive you. You can believe that he is the son of God, that he he died and he was was buried in that tomb, but he, he rose again on the third day. He came back to life because he's God. And confess with your mouth that he's Lord. Invite him to live in your heart and in your life. And I'm telling you, my friend, you will never be the same again. Yes, you'll still have problems. Your life won't be perfect, but you will be in perfect positioning to go through anything because God will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never turn his back on you. He'll never let you go. 
So if you want to make that decision today, and I really hope you do, I don't want to embarrass you. All heads are bowed, eyes are closed, but I want to know who you are, and this church as a family wants to pray with you as a group. So if that's you today, would you just raise your hand and let me know who you are so we can pray together this morning. Thank you. Amen. I see your hands. Anybody else this morning? In Jesus' name. Anybody else this morning? If you feel something tugging on your heart, that's called the Holy Spirit. And He loves you so much. That's Jesus saying, I died for you. Won't you come home? Anybody else this morning? Thank you, Father. So church, let's pray this prayer together in support of those that have made this life-changing, eternal decision. Father, I love you. Father, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I know I've sinned in so many ways. I know I've sinned in so many ways. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe Jesus is the Son of he God. He died for my sins. He died for my It's sins. only through him I can be saved. It's only through him that I can be saved. Live in my heart today, Jesus. Live in my heart today. Jesus. You are Lord. You are Lord. And King. And King. Help me to be different. Help me to be different. Never to be the same again. Never to be the same again. Heaven is my home. Heaven is in Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Hey, Amen. if you just made that decision today, it is the best decision you will ever make in your life. I know because I remember the day I did it. We have a gift for you that just did that. It's called our Next Step Kit. It's on the left as you leave today. Guys, it's got a message from Brad and I because listen, just a one time prayer is not going to cut it, all right? Because you're going to want to walk this out every single day. You need the Word of God, and that is what's in that gift over there, as well as a message from us to help you on your new journey. Will you put your hands together for those who just made that decision this morning? Woo-hoo! Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online, or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.